Hey everyone, good morning. I am Nancy Agdwar and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now we are going to solve today's Z code daily challenge which is zero error transformation first. Okay, so let's see what is this question and how we can solve it. So in this question you are given an integer array nums of length n and a 2D array queries where queries i is equals to this ri and ri. For each queries i, what you need to do, you need to select a subset of indices within the range in nums and decrement the values at the selected indices by 1. Okay, and a zero array is an array where all the elements are equal to zero. Return true if it is possible to transform nums into a zero array after processing all the queries sequentially, otherwise return false. Okay, so what you have been given in the question is that you have been given with a nums array of length n and a queries 2D array queries where you need to select a subset of indices within each query and decrement their value by 1 and you need to return true if it is possible to transform this nums into a zero array otherwise return false and a zero array is an array in which all the elements are equals to zero okay so let's take this array so first query is 0 to 2 that's 0 1 2 so let's take a subset of indices from this z range 0 to 2. As you can see, we have we are asked to select a subset of indices. You can select all of them as well, but if our element is already 0, then why do you need to select that in this index? So let's select 0 and 2 and let's decrement their value by 1. Now your final array is this and your queries are also ended. So yes, you can make this array as 0 array, so you will return true. Okay, now let's see another example as well. 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, indices are 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so first query is selecting indices in the range of 1, 2, 3. Okay, okay. All are greater than 0, so let's say we will select all of them and we will decrement them by 1. Okay, now another query is 0 to 2. All are greater than 0, so let's say we will select all of them. Okay, now queries are ended, but our array is not a zero array, still elements are greater than zero. So what we will do, we will simply return false in this case, right, as you can see. So what is going to be the very basic brute force approach for this question, as you can see, right, we can simply start iterating in our queries and inside that queries loop, we can start iterating in our nums for that query let's say from 1 to 3 that see as we have done here like and then decrement their value by 1 in each iteration and then for second query decrement their value by 1 for each iteration and by the end of this loop let's check if any element is greater than is not equals to 0 if yes then return false otherwise return true okay but this brute force approach will give you time complexity of big O n square because you are using this one loop for iterating in the query and then another nested loop for iterating in this nums and both of their size can be up to 10 key power 5 so it will become 10 key power 10 which will give you TLE so this brute force approach is not going to work okay so let's see what we can do to solve this question so let's take that example 4 3 2 1 and the queries were 1, 3 and 0 and 2. Okay. Queries are 1, 3, 0 and 2. Cool. Okay. Now what we are we were doing in the brute force approach is that we are iterating on this nums again and again for different queries. Okay. What if we can get the maximum number of operations we can do at each index? Let's say let's say we are iterating from 1 to 3, right? Let's say these are indexes 1, 2, 3. Let's say we can get the maximum number of operations we can perform at each index. From 1, 2, 3, we can perform operations on 1, 2, and 3, all of them. So let's increment their count. From 0 to 2, 0, 1, and 2, we can perform operations on all these indexes. We can select a subset of indices as well. But now let's talk about the maximum number of operations we can perform at a particular index. So let's increment it. 0, let's increment it, let's increment it. So this is the maximum number of operations we can perform at a particular index. Okay, 
and if that maximum number of operations is greater than or equals to this value then obviously we can make it zero right because we can decrement that value by one that number of times so obviously we can decrement make it to zero but if that value is less than the nums of i then obviously we can't make it to zero okay so you can see we can perform only at max one operation on the zeroth index so at max we can decrement it to three and as you can see here also at max we were able to we was able to decrement it to three only so it means it is not possible to make it a zero array so what we have derived from here is that if it is possible to count the maximum number of operations at each index then we can simply get whether it is possible to make it a zero array or not because if maximum number of operations is less than the value at that index then obviously we are not we cannot make that array a zero array okay so let's see how we can get this array of maximum number of operations okay so first can we create some diff array let's say okay with four size okay so its indices are also 0 1 2 and 3 okay now when we are at this query so we can start incrementing from the index 1 when we can increment at the index 3 okay let's increment its value at 1 it, it is initialized with 0 let's say but if we keep iterating on this difference array again and again then also it will give you t here it will give you n square complexity so obviously we can't iterate in this array again and again okay so what we can do okay so let's just update the value for the left one with plus one and let's update the value with minus one for this n plus one let's say we will create this diff array of size n plus one where n is the size of this nums and we will decrement it by one we will decrement write plus one by one because we can perform operations on the indices in the range of one two three so we can keep track of two three and other indices with this with the help of this one but after three we don't want to keep track of that index we don't we can't perform this operation so that's why we will just do minus one after write plus one okay so now let's take this as well zero to two so let's increment at the left index and right plus 1 is 3 so decrement at the right plus 1 index okay now this is a diff array this is not this maximum cooperation array this is just a diff array okay now we have iterated on all the queries now let's create a max count array okay now let's see how we can create that max count array okay now we can just keep adding all these differences let's see this is one now one plus one two two plus zero two two minus one one so you can see that on the zeroth index we can perform at most one in operation on the one and two index we can perform two operations and on the third index we can perform at most one operation as you can see here as well one two two and two these were the maximum number of operations we can perform at a particular index and we have all got the same number of operations with this algorithm with this prefix sum way in which we have first calculated the difference array in which we have incremented the left by one and decremented the right plus one by one and then just added all of those frequencies to keep the track of maximum count maximum operations we can perform at a particular index and now we can check with this if it is less than this any number then we will return false otherwise we will return true so why we are doing this plus one and minus one here because we till three we need this frequency we can track this frequency till three but after three we cannot use this query to decrement the element by one so that's why we will just simply decrement one S same for here from zero to two we can perform this query but after two we can perform only this query so that's why we will just decrement it by one cool okay so let's try code it okay so what we need to do we need to first create a difference array of size n plus one initialized with zero 
so let's also initialize n with nums dot size and what we need to do we need to iterate in our queries i is less than queries dot size i plus plus int left is equals to queries of i zero right is equals to queries of i one and diff array of left plus plus and difference array of right plus one minus minus right and then what we will do we will create a max operation array let's say and we will start iterating in our i is less than n in our difference array to calculate it so let's also current operations let's say is equals to zero and we will keep up adding it in it a current operation plus is equals to diff array of i and we will simply push that operations in our max operations push back to current operation cool and then we will iterate in our nums to check whether current operations are less than, greater than, or equals to i is less than n i plus plus. If max operations of i is less than nums of i, then we can't make it a zero array, so we will return false. Otherwise, we will return true. Okay, let's try them this. It's working fine. Let's try submitting it. Yeah, it's working fine. So now let's talk about its time and space complexity as well. So as you can see in this algorithm, we are iterating using this one loop, this another loop, and this another loop. But these are all are separate loops, so its complexity will be big O of 3n, or you can say that big O of n. And its space complexity will also be this n for difference array and this n for maximum operation so it will be 2n or you can say big O of n so yeah that's it for this question i hope you get it but if you still have any doubts then you can post in the comment section i will surely try to answer them till then bye guys see you in the next video